Doggus. Molly Wagus, Smelly Doggus. You're on camera. And I'm just not going to go for it. I don't care if they offer me a million bucks. I'm not going to go for it. So, it was their contractors that came on and took all my fence down and just made all kinds of ruts down there. Finally, they admitted it was their contractor who did that because Velcro has never done anything like that before. But it was a mess. Blue herons go back and forth from the Cedar Lake, you know, Moncton Pond, down into our area every day. We have Canada geese. We have just all that kind of stuff that's different. Yes, the threatening eminent domain. And how much did they offer you? $42,000. Um, why are you against it? You are just raised? Um, because I think it's, an, it's a fossil fuel. It's another evil fuel. Yes, we have propane. Yes, we have oil, but we already have those. And we have no choice but to use those until we can get alternatives. But there's, it doesn't make sense to make a 100-year investment into another fossil fuel. That, the, that this gas line comes up to here, right behind our, our barns and stuff. So they've got a lot, they own a lot. But when we bought here, our realtors said 150 feet and apparently that's what our, our attorney thought when he did it all. And the same over here with this guy. We got a woman uh, attorney through his house. Same thing. Nobody but nobody knew that they owned 350 feet till this thing started. Then we realized just how much they, they have control of. Yep. Yep. For years, all this property's been great. Property's been great. The lake over here, you know, and and all the animals and the wildlife and everything. I mean, we've done a lot. I think it's done a lot with, And I'm know, scary because this used to be there's a so many over here, but I've places in Heinsburg and all over the country where it explodes. But I wasn't here on the 25th when the post office came with a certified letter. So she left a, a card, and I went over and got it on Monday on the 27th. And that's when they wanted it signed and back. I didn't sign it. I just put on the bottom of it, I'm not ready to sign this, is there are several questions that have not been answered. And I emailed this James Whiteside, who's the agent at the time, and he told me not to bother to send it. But I did anyway. No, they couldn't have goat sheep or anything down there with that pipeline running through, because they say it does leak. And it would come out, you know, on that line along down through there. And we aren't supposed to touch it. Plus, we could sell a lot down there. There's a beautiful lot down there that we could sell. But we wouldn't be able to do it, I don't believe. I wanted to ask them that question. I haven't gotten to that. It's the same way with the Velcro line. I don't think it's quite fair. I just don't think it is. And when they're only going to offer you like $2,700 for the whole thing, and that's the end of it, and, and I pay almost $4,000 a year in taxes, that's a lot. That's a lot. So what was the And I know I've watched uh, some of them there on, uh, from Vermont Gas on television and all, and they've lied. They truly have lied. Yeah. And everyone else has said the same thing, that they, they know they do. Um, the farm behind us is where they want to put the uh, fracked gas pipeline. This is in Moncton, Vermont. Uh, Laughing Tree Farm. Um, she says it from the far headline, there's a, a white chunk there, the neighbor's land, but it would come through both of their properties straight through here. My interest, you know, it's like I think we should have 
control of our energy. We should have a farm-based energy. You know, we shouldn't be relying on some large corporation to provide our energy. You know, farms would be a lot more efficient if they could produce their own power instead of have to buy their power <coughs> on the farms and make their crops. You know, it should be part of their crop. So that's kind of one of the angles I've been working on for years. And when I heard this pipeline was coming through, I thought, well, you know, this is, you know, modernization of hooking the pipeline, but what's this going to do to alternative energy? Because, you know, whenever you start looking at an alternative energy project, you look at what's the price of a barrel of oil, what's the cost of heating oil, what's it going to cost me to make my alternative project, you've got to make it competitive with that. So mm -hmm. all of a sudden you throw in a 40% cheaper fossil fuel, it's that 40% cut right off from the whole project. You've got to make your alternative energy project that much cheaper. So, you know, the, the mentality that people get into that you can't stop this, you know, really works to Vermont Gas's advantage, you know. People would just right. step their feet and say, no, we're not going to do that's this. That's part of their, um, their method is, is to convince people that it's going to happen. That's what they said. They said, oh, it's coming through. It's going. And Not then, yet, and that you're right, that they're trying to make everyone uh, agree to it before it's even really been talked about. I mean, this mm -hmm. one lady just heard about it a month ago, uh, yeah. that it's going on her land, and um, Velcos, and they're definitely rushing it through, um, because oh. I think more the people know, the less they'll like it, and also, yeah. um, it's... Uh, well, you, you, it takes a while to dig through all the crap, you mm -hmm. know, it's like they told us that the reason they have to come over here is constructability because Velcro doesn't want it there. And it's like, well, you can kind of understand that until you start digging into it and you realize that Vermont Gas is owned by Gas Metro, and Gas Metro owns Green Mountain Power and took up CVPH. And in the merger, they also wound up with 40% of Velcro. So this is like they're telling us that they don't want to use their own easement. They'd rather put another easement through our farm because it's too much of a burden to use their own existing easement. Is what it really comes so down to. So burdened to use their own easement. It's, yeah, it's, it's quite a uh, uh, one of the issues that's coming up is legal power and money. It's like so the big corporations have all the money and they can buy all these lawyers and then they just do whatever they want with the lawyers and the yeah. little people. I mean, we were talking. So you know, I mean, they'll tell you anything they can do to smooth you through, you know, right. it's like this whole thing you know, with, with Velco not wanting it over there, you know, it's like not only did we have to go into the 248 process and defend ourselves against what Vermont Gas had, Velco had their lawyers there trying to defend their interests, so we're fighting like both sides of the corporation Plus with the different town. attorneys. And, wow. and our town is convinced that this is the better route, so we're fighting our town attorney. You know, at the same time, it's like, come on, you know, oh, like, man. what's going on here, you know, so you, you, you just wonder, and, and we kept trying to find out why do they want to come across to our farm when they've got a 350 foot wide Velcro corridor, and they said, well, you know, there's a guy wire over there, it's like, there's a guy wire in your way, so you're going to reroute the pipeline 4,000 feet, they said, well, there's a deep ravine over there, and I said, there's a deep ravine over there, I said, have you heard about Lake Champlain? You know, if you can't get through a ravine in Moncton, you better stay away from Lake Champlain. You know, that's right. The, the next leg is supposed to be going underneath the lake. Yeah, underneath the Lake Champlain. It's you know. just asking for trouble. Yeah, it's like right. you know, so it's so under the lake. They're yeah, not we're, getting the, the opposition they should be getting. Yeah, we're I don't telling. I think anyone knows about it. It's, yeah, it's been sort of like gotta get out. It's there. like we are, we blame this, no. farmers for the pollution to the lake. You know, it's like it's the it's the nitrates and the phosphorus that are running off from you know from the farms. You know, and, and there's talk about how you know we should go back to more, and a lot of people are going back to more of a grazing mentality instead of bringing mm -hmm. food to your farm because it makes the digestion less, and there's less gas coming from the methane. farm, so there's left methane. Yet we're going to bring a 12-inch pipeline of methane, 1,400 pounds of pressure through the middle of our state, but we can't let our cow fart. <laughs> you know, it's like, really? come on, <laughs> you know what's going on what's here? What's the priority here? Climate change or? Uh... You know, and it's like, you, you, the more you find out, the more you hear, it just drives you nuts, you know. It's like Middlebury College down there, it's like, it has this image of being such a green college and so environmentally insensitive, uh, sensitive. and I've always, you know, kind of looked at them as a good thing. It's like, you know, they've, they've gotten off from number six fuel oil, they've done a lot to renovate buildings and make them more energy efficient. They put in a huge gasifier a few years ago, so that they could 
just burning local wood chips produced mm -hmm. within a hundred feet, a hundred miles of their property, and they've gone so far as to plant willow bushes, like basket willows, mm -hmm. that rapidly grow every three years. You can harvest them, and they'll grow back seven times before you have to replant them. Mm -hmm. So this is sustainable crop that they can grow on their own land. They put in this huge gasifier, and then I hear that they want to hook to natural gas. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's totally contradictory you know it's like it's the whole thing it clashes with me it's like you, you can't sit here and say we have a climate change issue and we need to get off from fossil fuels but let's build out a hundred year pipeline of fossil fuels right we got to get to 90 percent renewables by 2050 but in 2015 we're going to do a hundred year build out of fossil fuel in vermont you know it's like well, and they probably have another hundred years of gas they probably have to <coughs> burn every bit i think they Estimate we have five times more than the planet will handle. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so let's they're kill gonna, ourselves they're five gonna try times and burn over. Everything. They're yeah. going to take every last dollar off the table and burn everything they can. Well, conservation doesn't put any money in anybody's pocket. Right. Big you know, problem. Energy efficiency. I mean, that's it makes jobs, but it doesn't put any. It doesn't make any corporations rich, and that's the problem. Right. It's just not. It's not economical to. For these corporations to do that, so mm. there's just so many things that are so wrong with this, and like you know, I just I can't see them. I'm not going to cooperate and let them use my land to put a pipeline in when I know that you look down the line of where this gas is coming from, and it's just damaging so many other people's mm. land. You know, I mean, they're having health issues, their cattle are getting sick, their water's getting contaminated. I don't want to be part of that. You know, mm. I mean, that that's nothing I want to be involved in. You know, I want to be involved in the solution, not in the in the problem. I want to be part of the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous that you know we have this mentality that you know we shouldn't frack in Vermont, but it's okay to bring frack gas from someplace else because it's cheap. Right. You yeah. know, we tried to bring up the, we tried to bring that up in the 248 process that you know there are people on the other side of this pipeline that are being damaged, and they said you know unless it's damaging people in Vermont, we can't even look at that. It's like, come on, it's damaging somebody right. else, you know. We're no longer a little town separated and isolated, you know. We're a global community, you know. We've That's globalized right. the economy. We have to take responsibility for not only our neighbor across the road, but across the county, across the country, across the border. But, you know, I mean, I reached out to NOFA and said, hey, you know, like, what's this going to do to organic certification if you have a tube of methane going across your farm? And they said, well... You know, if it doesn't leak, it really shouldn't be too big a problem. I said, well, the national average is 3% loss of methane in a transmission line. I said, oh, well, that could be a problem if you're where the 3% comes out. It's like, well, yeah. <laughs> I said, how are you going to know if you've got a leak? And I said, well, we monitor the pressure, and we fly over once a year, and we walk the line once a month, and our neighbor says, well, this is gas. You're not going to see a geyser coming out of the ground out there. You know, what are you looking for? And they said, well, we're looking for the vegetation where it's turning yellow, and then we hone in on where the leak is and repair it. So by the time you get to the point that you're vegetation has turned yellow you know you, you, your crops pretty well wasted mm -hmm. and like our neighbor over here that runs the berry farm says so six months of the year when there's snow on the ground they can't tell if there's a leak mm -hmm. it's like you know that makes you just feel real confident that this is what you want coming through your property i mean it's even the space shuttles and like the nasa is when they did the, the moon landing ones they had a very hard time keeping 100 percent they they were like, oh, we're going for 100% air pressure, but that didn't happen. Mm. Yeah. Like, even the highest technical build-out of our spacecraft, gas will find its way through the edge oh, of some yeah. metal thing, and especially if it's a bolt underground where it's screwed on by some meth head who maybe got them all the way down or maybe <laughs> too far down. You know? yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're, they all leak. Um, so our point was that in the process of putting this pipeline in, even if it was a water line, it right. would destroy the soil for them to come through our two two acre improved garden area you know just to think about those machines going through there is like you know it's like somebody Crazy. driving over your that's your uh, bed. one of the things that their, one of their engineers says this is no yeah. different than putting in a wall you know especially if you're organically farming if you're a conventional farmer and you can just add your your uh, elements back in well that's different but 
it's still going to destroy right. the structure. If you've built up all the, the microbial the life soil. and the health of the soil right. and you have any tilth, then... Right. Well. Which, which an organic farmer would understand. Right. Um, they, they pretend like it's some sort of a lawn maintenance project, like at the country club. Though. We'll come back and we'll leave some mulch and yeah. Yeah. Some we'll hay. put some fertilizer on it. It'll yeah. go away. It's like, no, 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 no. You know, More you, like a gravel pit. Well, uh, that, that's the thing. People don't understand it. I mean, other people around here we talk to, you know, people couldn't understand why we don't want it coming through our field. And they said, well, it's just rocks and dirt down there. What's the difference? <laughs> you know, I mean, soil is not rocks and dirt, you know. It's no, a big difference. It's alive. stand to make about three thousand dollars or something from that well so I won't what, what make three thousand dollars if they offer me thirty five hundred dollars by the time I do the closing and you know pay an attorney to make sure the paperwork's done and everything mm -hmm. I'll have to have out-of-pocket expenses you know this right. is not gonna make me any money it wouldn't even cover my expenses you know let alone what it does for damage to the value of my property or Incredible. what it does to my state of mind to having a known that there's mm -hmm. a pipeline 100 foot from my house with 1400 pounds of pressure in it you know I mean even if it wasn't a volatile <laughs> gas just 1400 pounds of pressure letting go of, <laughs> it makes a heck of Anything, a pop yeah. That's an incredible, so, an interesting angle of this is that the ratepayers are financing this thing mm -hmm. and that uh, Vermont Gas went and got a separate order from the Public Service Board to get it so that ratepayers would be on the hook. Somewhere. Yeah, they did this what was it, reliability financing. fund a few years ago where they, instead of having Vermont Gas decrease their rate because they were getting gas cheaper, they put that money aside so that they could expand their pipeline system. So basically the land, the rate payers that are active with them now are being charged more than they should be so that they can subsidize this pipeline for the next batch of rate payers. The legal system is upside down. So they have all this money to fight and you guys you guys are rep representing yourselves? Yeah, we, we didn't have a choice to hire a lawyer. I mean, it was ridiculous. Some of the, mm, the prices that we had thrown around, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, you know, to have a lawyer represent you. You know, we heard one place is like, oh, it'll cost you 150000 to go through the, the 248 process. It's like... And you're still going to lose, this yeah. is what they told us. Right, so can you say that again? I mean, so didn't they say, like, uh, you'll go through this and you'll... So some lawyer said to you, uh, you'll pay $75,000 and then you'll still lose. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And do you want to do you want to go ahead? You know, it's like, well, who would in their right mind? You know, right. when even you, the attorney is telling you you're going to lose. <laughs> you know, but mm. we didn't feel that it was a matter of winning or losing. We just feel we need to, you know, do a public outcry, let everybody know what's going on. You know, this is coming, and nobody's even seeing it coming. You know, I mean, right. it's ridiculous. You would, and. Nobody even knows the full impact of this now because they're they're only talking about phase one and phase two. This is actually a four phase build out, and hmm. you know they they broke it up to make it a little easier to to uh, wow. digest. <laughs> you know, but this is a 43 mile build out. The second one is you know 23 or something. It's actually 112 miles of transmission line that they'll build out in the four phases. And if you figure that out, 112 miles of, of pipeline, it's uh, six a little over six acres per mile of permanent easement so and and then there's another 300 ac uh, acres or another three acres with each mile that's the work area so you're actually impacting over a thousand acres of land in the state of Vermont they want to and it's tying up this real estate this is over seven million dollars worth of real estate on, on a conservative price, you know, right. that's going to be taken off the books that, you know, you're going to have to pay the taxes, the insurance, and and the, you mortgage. Know, and the mortgage on this land. They get to use it. They get the benefits. Right. You know, you they look don't at actually it. buy it. No, they yeah. don't buy it. You know, you're still on the hook for it. You're helping them them yeah. out. You know, it's if they had to buy also, this. You know, why? The reason that this gas is cheap is because they're, they're not um, figuring in the costs to landowners, the people that are on the other end of the pipeline that are 
paying with their water and their air and their health problems and their their land. You know, these if they had to pay for all this stuff, the price of gas would not be so cheap. But when somebody says, I want cheap gas, why wouldn't you want cheap gas? You know, our answer is, you're, the only reason you're getting cheap gas is because people like us are going to have to pay for it. Mm. We're not even being offered gas. You know, we never were offered gas. We're, we're not on the distribution line. We wouldn't want it anyway. But many people on this transmission line are not being offered distribution. They're only going to offer it to up to 3,000 people in phase one. Phase two, what is it, 75? Yeah. Yeah. So none of these are, you're not going to just hook up to natural gas. Even if you have propane, you've still got an expense of ch swapping it over. If you're propane and you've got a relatively efficient unit, you probably can do it for, you know, six or eight hundred bucks or something like that. But if you've got an older boiler, you know, like an oil boiler, or like us, we've run solid fuel, we've run wood pellets, we'd have to take our whole unit out. There's no way you could get good efficiency out of that. And we got a quote from, you know, a local um, plumbing outfit, and they said, you know, without looking at your exact project, you, you better budget about $12,000. Mm -hmm. we, know, we could be leaders. We are considered leaders in the alternative energy field. We have more people per capita working on alternative energy in Vermont than there is anywhere else in the United mm -hmm. States. And, you know, that's the way we should be going. Yet here we are with a governor saying, we need to put this pipeline in because this will get us to alternative energy. It's like, hey, Pete, where did you come up with that one? You know, it's like, that's not how you get to alternative energy by building out fossil fuel. Right. It's, you know, I've got a customer at, at my shop who owns, uh, or I, he did own the gathering pipes out in Oklahoma. And, you know, he said, oh, that fracking thing's all overstated. He goes, you know, they just put a little bit of chemicals in there. I said, yeah, but, you know, if I spill those chemicals on my shop floor here, when I'm working on your vehicle, the same type of chemicals, I'd have to clean them up and ship them as a hazardous waste. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, you're probably right. It's like, <laughs> mm -hmm. and this is what you're exempted from being able to put down into the earth? Yeah, it's the most, uh, there's stories about um, these people who transport water, these water trucks, and then... Uh, they spray on the, the, the fracking liquid on the roads, so you're basically yeah. like scattering the pollution all over the surface of the world. Yeah, they do that right in Pennsylvania. They've got a beneficial use permit to do that. It's like, that's a beneficial use to contaminate the entire world a little bit instead of one area a lot. Let's just spread it around. You'll develop immunities we'll wash your roads for you. Yeah. It's like, well, it wouldn't be cheap if you followed the rules that all the rest of us have to follow. Right. You know, I can't damage the drinking water and the clean air. I can't right. ignore the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act in my business, so why should they be able to? In the pipeline that was built, people may not have heard this, but um, two guys were caught making meth and they were working on the pipeline. Um, and apparently that, that is a kind of a part of the culture of the pipeline industry up in North Dakota. Oh. Oh, God. The reality is, you know, it's not the workers fault, it's the, it's the Vermont gas because they are hiring the contractors and they're going for these low pay, they're going for the low bidder. Right. And the low bidders are not union. And the union guys, you know, have a standard, they have tests that they have to, to go through to be, be in the union. You know, they want to keep their jobs. They don't want to get fired because they're making good money. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't know. I think it's, it's, even the union guys have to work those kinds of hours, which is, it, it's insane. It's just insane. And, and How long the are the hours? They work 12 to 14 hours a day, six to seven days a week. You know, when they're under a, um, a deadline, and some of them have performance bonds, so they have to get, you know, I don't, maybe this isn't the case with this, Fly by night company, but if they don't get their job done by a certain deadline, they have a big penalty. So they push, they push these guys. And um, my brother works on the pipelines, and he said, you know, this the last job he was on is seven was seven days a week. And I said, oh my God, I did, did, don't people get hurt? He goes, oh yeah, people breaking two, legs, breaking arms, legs, arms you know, falling down in the ditch, you know. Um, and I, and I said, what about the safety? He said, well, I'm sure it's not as good. You know, if you've got people that are strung out and right. tired, I mean, even young people, 
That's a lot of hours to be Even if in. you're not on dope and you work 12 hours a day, especially if you're not yeah. on meth, you're worn out by right. the end of the day. So you kind of need them to stay up all night to doing that. Oh, this is, you know, all this pipeline is welded together. And one of the big differences between the union guys and the non-union guys that are working up here is the union does a, a two-pass process where they weld up the pipe with the 6011 rod, gives you the strength, and then go over with a 7013 rod, which gives you a complete so there's no porosity in it and it's a really strong rod it's double lap these guys are doing a single weld from the top down right on around with one shot and having welded for years i can tell you that with a wet when you're welding downhill you can make a hell of a lot nicer looking weld a lot quicker but you don't have anywhere near the penetration you do when you're actually stacking it up from the bottom coming up through. It's just such a superior weld, and this is what these guys are doing. They're welding down, whoosh, one pass. It, this story, just it's like one of those Russian dolls, you know, it's something irritating, mm. and then underneath there's another... Yeah, you think that's irritating. irritating, wait till I show you what this looks like. They're not If you think even that's gross, wait till I show you what this really gross thing is. It's, it's unbelievable. Not only are the welders on meth, they're not even doing the best welds. Well, if this pipeline here. was necessary, it would be a different story. Yep. If it was something that we needed, but we don't need it. It's not they necessary. It. It's, a, it's a couple of corporations that want it, and this is why they're building it. And this is why we have to host it, because they want it. And that's, that's the whole crux of it. If, if, if it was necessary, and if they had the time and the money to do it right, um, it would be a whole different story. You know? But this is not what we need at this time of the climate crisis. Yeah. It's not what we need for Vermont, because Vermont doesn't... Vermont is okay without natural gas. I mean, there are. It is in Franklin County and Chittenden County. They keep saying that um, we need it for the economic stimulus. Well, Franklin County is not where anybody in Addison County wants to go. You know, we don't want to be like Great Franklin County. County. You know, um, it doesn't fix anything that's wrong. So, and Middlebury is growing in their industrial area without natural gas. So, you know, this is totally a manufactured need. Yeah. There is no need. This is going on everywhere um, and uh, it involves like eminent domain and the power of uh, money to make it so rich corporations can hire lawyers but poor people can't. So it's really just a sort of like where we're at as an age. You know, the money is too powerful, the legal system's broken down. This is a dark age, man. This isn't an age of justice and righteousness. This is like, we are living in dark times. Um, they're blowing up the water supply right now for fracking. They're like making the water undrinkable. It's a huge crime scene.